But we're going to do a class based on reverse engineering a backtake today. To start with, we're going to we're going to play from a particular position. We're going to do a warm drill that we do all the time. Um, basically, person on bottom, your job is to square up and to get your feet in front of your opponent in open guard. The person on top job is just to pass to the line of the knee. This is really important that you're not actually trying to pass guard. You're not going chest over chest, you're not going knee on belly or anything like that. So you just get to the line of the knee, whether it's a knee cut sort of position, HQ position, uh, Tariana style position. This is a playful exercise that's going to help both people. It's going to help me with my guard retention. It's going to help my partner with his footwork and passing movements. We're trying to work, he's trying to work flanking and get into these positions where he could pass. And I'm trying to work when somebody's about to flank me, being able to square back up to him and then be able to do my stuff, okay? So what we're gonna do is like, kind of you? We're gonna do two minutes each, this is my full wall drill. I'm having my feet, look at my feet here, they're facing kind of, this is where I wanna be. Look at my knees, they're to my chest, and I'm here in this position. I don't wanna be extended, so at no point do I really wanna extend my legs away from him, because that opens up me to elbow space, which is gonna allow him to pass really easily. Or at no point do I really wanna put my feet on the floor, because I've just got a dead guard then, it's just dead. Yeah, my feet always wanna be sort of up, so we're here. Right, he's going to launch past the line of me. And if he does get to the line of me, I want him to try and hold this position for as long as he can. Yeah, hold the position for as long as he can. And I've got to re square back up. Realistically, the top player should try and keep contact with me for as long as he can. Not, not like this. Go on your back. I want to try and stay as connected. For the principles for me, I want to control the feet realistically at all times. Yeah? Ready? Go. Kind of speak, the harder it is for him. So we get a partner, uh, one person top, one person bottom, two minutes, and let's walk around one, two. There is no way for either player to win this game. And hold these positions for as long as can. It's not stable as near belly, but the point is, I'm not trying to be stable, I'm just trying to make it work out. We're counting inside as well, aren't we? We're counting inside. What, you know, yeah, if you look at, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I want to slow this down slightly. I feel sometimes as we get too competitive with these tasks and what we're doing, we actually lose the core values of the exercise. When I'm doing guard retention, I shouldn't really be doing a lot. In all honesty, I should be slow. I should be tight. <coughs> The more space I give out when doing guard retention, the more opportunity I give my opponent to consolidate passes. Now, it's hard to see that right now because there is no consequence for your actions because the guy on top isn't trying to pass, okay? The trick is, is when somebody passes to the line of the knee, is not to completely spaz out and open yourself up to try and get back to guard because in that instant, you will get your guard passed. Does that make sense, right? So if I'm here with Connor, and it kind of passes to the line of my knee. Look how easy that comes. See how easy that was? Just because I'm fucking tight on my knee and my elbow. Okay? There are some instances where you do have to graph and explode a tad. But if you're in a round and you're exploding five or six times in the space of two minutes, you're gonna gas. 
Yeah. I'm a lazy person, man. I don't like exercising. You know, I like eating KFC and drinking Red Bulls. So I don't have a gas tank. Yeah. So my, my goal is, the way I would beat people is, I just be more technically superior. Yeah. Rather than trying to outwork them. I don't need to outwork. I want them to work hard. I want to work little. Connor's got like three bars of stamina. I got half a bar of stamina, man. But if I can make these three bars of stamina go to zero before my half a bar goes to zero, I'm gonna win. Yeah, so we're doing this goal again, let's go. Now, this is an instant where I might have to open up a little bit, because he's tracking my shin. He's, he's doing a really good job as well. He's controlling my feet. So, what I might have to do, extend myself away just a tad. Now we're here in these sort of positions. We're gonna play the same game. My goal now is to get to a position where I'm controlling his feet, potentially with both hands, and try and get my feet to the inside position. Does that make sense? I'll show you, we're ready to go. This, yeah. that's my goal. Once I get here, I'm trying to hold this position for as long as I can. I'm kind of trying to get out of it. Still inside position, showing the feet or his upper body. That's what I'm trying to do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Hey, what do you want to? Oh, The importance of this is about obviously keeping a tight guard. The person on top has to engage and get close to me. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to work into what we call inside position. Inside position where I've got my hands on his feet, and then my feet, my shit, my feet are on the inside, hooking his knees. Yeah, a lot of times your feet are going to work in either one or two ways. Or are we going to post, which is like your foot being on something, like pushing it away, or you can hook, and the hook stops them from from pulling the weight, so it pulls them in, so hooks and posts. And they can be used in combination with each other. Um, we're gonna do something that we did yesterday, and then we're gonna go back, then we're gonna, then we're gonna speed up all the way to, to the end of the goal that I wanna do. We're gonna speed up to the end of the goal that I wanna do, and then we're gonna come backwards, all right? So we're gonna start, I'll use Johnson for this. Um, we're gonna start, my feet are hooking on the inside of his knee, and I'm holding his ankles. The biggest thing I want you to take into mind is the concept of sticky feet. If Johnson was to step one of his legs up, my foot follows, that is sticky feet. If he steps his leg up now, that's a dead foot, yeah? I want to try and make sure my feet are always stuck to him and following him in the way that is this. Feel that sort of, all this element of tension that I'm doing with Johnson right here. My goal from here is either to bring Johnson to his hands or to his hips. If he gets to his hips, I want to try and control his feet and be able to control his feet long enough so I can get to the top position. So like if I'm here and I sweep John T, I have to be able to control his feet and be able to get up myself to sweep my partner. Now sometimes, we were doing this yesterday, um, if, like for example, I can't sweep John T, he's coming forward, I bring him onto his hand and then I can progress through many different types of positions and do the same concepts as before. Now to come up to the top position with my partner. Whether we're going to single leg X, X guard, anything that's like an inside position sort of guard. Yeah, which probably like single leg X, X, reverse X, those type of things. Yeah, because I have both feet on the inside position. John T's job is to pass to the line of the knee. So, if John T's here, it, like one more thing you can do is pummel one of his legs on the inside. That's passing to the line of the knee just by doing this. 
So he's in a good position to either smash past me or meek at me. Yeah, great. He's not gonna, we can. Okay? For me, I don't want there to be much consequence of getting past. I want it to be more focused on, he's gonna threaten me with passes, now I've gotta work out of it. And my goal is to basically get on top of Jonty by destabilizing and sweeping him. If I get to a position, let's say he brings his weight forward because I can't, he thinks oh, I switch to single AX. We were doing this yesterday in terms of we were finding the person on top was stripping the connections and the person on the bottom way too easily. So if you strip my connections and stuff. See this sort of stuff. And you're probably going to ask yourself, how do I stop something like that? And the answer is constant destabilization. If I can make it so John is always worried about his balance as opposed to stripping connections, you're going to find it a lot easier to sweep him. So like, say if I get to single leg X and he's trying to strip connections. And then I'll constantly make him base on the map. Yeah? Keep going, John T. Okay, so it's all about, all about making him force his hands on the mat so we can't use them to strip my connections. So we've got one person on bottom, we're going to start from that inside position. My goal is to drop him to his hips or bring him to his hands so I can work through a series of leg entanglements so I can get on top of him. His goal on top is to always remove connections and get to the line of the knee. Does that make sense? We'll switch to the partner slightly. Mix you guys up as well. Kind of, you work with Dan. And then, We'll have one person out at a time. We'll do three minute rounds and we'll swap over halfway through. Yeah? Um, and we'll have John T out first, then Bron with Matt. Yeah. Okay? Inside position, but well, we're going to be behind our opponent. Um, my goal when I'm behind my opponent is going to be one or two things. Back exposure is predominantly my first instance of attack. Sometimes guys will react in a way that will eliminate their back exposure, but will give you an easy sweep to get to the top position. Okay. The idea is similar to what we've just done from the front. You want to keep sticky hooks, hooks, and you can keep uh, you can keep connection on the ankles. That works really well. But I find climbing up to the belt will help pull somebody in. If we want to get if we're going to get back exposure, we want to pull them onto me. Sometimes they really strong, but you can use that belt as well to pull yourself up onto your opponent. Johnson, can you? I'll sort of show you the premise of this. If you turn around, my feet are hooked here. Okay? Now, we're gonna start here like this. My goal is to either get Jonty to his hands and get on top of him, whether it's turtle, or whether it's like a top position or side control or any type of guard, or I can pull him into my lap for back control. 
Okay? John T wants to stop over those things from happening and realistically stay upright in this position to start with. That's all John T's trying to do. He's not trying to square up into me. He's not trying to clear connections or escape. He's just trying to make life a little difficult for me. Yeah, ready? Go. Yeah? John T was really strong. So instead of pulling him down, what happened was instead, I pulled myself up because he's carrying my weight. Let's go again. There we go. Yeah. and we're just going to play around with this for six minutes. Like I said, it's not much resistance, but there's a bit of resistance on John T because he doesn't want those two things to happen to him. And my goal is to make something work. Yeah, He's not trying to clear connections. He's not trying to face into me. So really, you shouldn't lose the position unless you lose it yourself. Okay, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Ready, one, two. This like reverse butterfly position on the back is great when you're in an inside position, sort of guard, like single leg X or X, and you find the person on the top position is really hard to get to their hips. Yeah, you find it really difficult to get to their hips, but you can almost force them to their hands a lot, which gives us room to work towards their back. If that makes sense, does that make sense? I'll explain. I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, I'll show you. Right. And say if I'm here in a position, I start here, right. What am I doing in there? So I'm you don't allow your hips to hit the mats, actually. No, chance I hit the mat, go back. Really make, like, compensate, like, if you don't, if your hips are about to hit the mat, compensate your weight that way. Nice. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't let your hips This. Ah, uh, right. uh, yeah? Uh, okay. That's how that fits into the puzzle. As soon as you get basic. Because what happens when somebody puts their weight in their hands? They expose their back. They're, 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 that's it, awesome. They expose their back, number one. The number weight two, comes off their feet. The weight comes off their fucking feet, right? So if Connor's weight's on his hands, and I'm here, I don't know, let's say I'm in this position. Connor's weight's on his hands. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I can't stop that. It doesn't matter what I try and do. I'm there, right? We're in, yeah? That's the idea of this position. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to start our rounds from front inside position. Both feet on the inside, hands on the feet, and we just roll from there. Front inside position. Yeah, okay. so facing. The only time we start is when there's a submission. Okay, and then if there's a submission, restart with the other person on the inside position. Does that make sense? Okay, ready, one, two.
Turn it around. Obviously, that was just a snippet of the garden kind of stuff concepts. What I wanted to go over today. The main concept of today was: if you're feeling it difficult to displace them to their hips, if you can get them to their hands, we can work towards the back. And then sometimes, as they defend the back, they drop their hips to the mat, which allows us to come on top for sweeps and stuff. Anyway, it's this dilemma situation. They don't want us to sweep them, so they expose their back while putting their hands to the mat, whether they know they are or not. And then sometimes when they don't want us to get in the back, they drop their hips and back to the mat, which gives us the sweep. We're just trying to always cause these dilemmas and make them flip-flop between them and recognize which attacks are which when it comes to entanglements on the bottom position. Okay, but I've seen people do that today. It was good work, everyone, but yeah, good to go. We can come around for right Thank you very much.